Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were uh, studying the literal kingdom in chapter 10. So any questions anyone has in this uh, chapter? I'm sure you have a lot of questions regarding the end times, the signs, what is going to happen. Um, but, you know, you will be studying a course in detail um, called eschatology and all that's happening in the end times. So I think most of your doubts and queries will all be answered then. But if any of you have any questions regarding what was mentioned in this chapter, in chapter 10, anyone has any questions? Okay. No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, we'll move on to chapter 11, the last chapter in this uh, publication, uh, The Kingdom of God, The Kingdom Mandate. Okay, uh, we know that there is a mandate on our lives, a commission, a responsibility, a call on our lives that Jesus has placed, and that is the kingdom mandate. And um, Jesus put it for us in this way when he said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. So can somebody please read Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, please? Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Can somebody read that, please, for us? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So Jesus said, I want you to pray this way. And he says, what does he say? You know, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in uh, heaven, which means the mandate to see his kingdom is on you and me because you and me are asked to pray. And what are we asked to pray? We are asked to pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in um, heaven. So, you know, it the mandate is on each one of us and it's on you and me that we need to uh, pray. So in your home, what do you pray? You pray, Lord, thy kingdom come, that will be done in my home, in my house. If you're staying in an apartment complex, you know, and there are hundreds of people staying around you in the apartments, you know, even as you walk out, you uh, or you're walking towards your apartment, you know, you're looking at all these apartment complexes, the, uh, the hundreds of people living uh, in these apartments. You can pray, Lord, thy kingdom come, that will be done in my apartment complex. Or if you're living in a neighborhood, you know, and as you walk around, uh, there are people living there. Some you know, some you don't know. But you can pray, God, your kingdom come, that your will be done uh, in my neighborhood. Now you go to office, you go to the uh, the grocery store, wherever you go. You go to your office, you've got friends, you've got colleagues, you know, you've got your bosses there. Some are good, some you get along with, some you don't get along with. You know, you come to Bible college, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, even as you meet different kind of people at your workplace um, and, you know, you go through different situations in your workplace, um, even as you walk in and walk out of your workplace or walk in and walk out of Bible college, your prayer can be, Lord, let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done in this place. So that's the mandate that's on our life. That's the mandate that's in your life and my life. And uh, the mandate is for us to pray. And what are we to pray? We are to pray that God's kingdom come, his will be done in wherever we are, you know, uh, in any area, every sphere of our lives, in our neighborhood, in our workplace, in our college, in our schools, wherever we go to, you know, this is what we are asked to pray. This is the mandate that is on your life and my life. So it's our responsibility to see his kingdom come and his will be established in our uh, lives. Okay. Uh, so when you pray that prayer, you know, what is going to happen is you're going to be part of the answer to that 
prayer. Because when we pray, you know, and when we pray things that are in accordance with God's will, God is going to answer. So when you pray, your prayer is going to be, you are going to be part of the answer to that uh, prayer. So as you pray that kingdom come, God says, okay, you know, that he is going to release his kingdom. His kingdom is going to come in and through you. Okay. Now the Pharisees, uh, they came to Jesus and they were trying to figure out how, you know, his kingdom is going to come here on earth. Now Jesus is preaching about the kingdom of God and he's saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. But, you know, they are wondering where is the kingdom, you know, they, they can't see the physical aspect of the, the kingdom because they have envisioned the kingdom to be a king who will come, who will ride, who will overthrow the enemies and would, uh, you know, um, give freedom to these uh, Jews and they will be in authority and in, uh, in power and not be oppressed by the Roman government uh, who was oppressing um, them. So, you know, they were trying to figure out how this kingdom is going to uh, come. So when Jesus is saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is here, you know, they're wondering, but where is this kingdom and how is it going to come? So they said, you know, Lord, tell us how this kingdom is going to come. And look at what Jesus' response was in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. Can somebody read that, please? Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is in within you. Yeah, amen. So here it says, you know, Jesus says, it does not come the way that you think is going to come, like the traditional monarchs and the kings uh, that you have seen marching and, you know, this great parades that they have. But he says the kingdom of God is not going to come like this traditional kings who parade and bring about you come in pomp and show and all their glory and majesty. But he says the kingdom of God comes, you know, um, uh, not in these ways, but he says the kingdom of God is within you. It is within them. But the kingdom that Jesus has been talking about is a kingdom that is within them. So, you know, as you and I are praying, God, let your kingdom come in my home, let it come in my neighborhood, in my apartment complex, in my office, and, you know, the Bible college where I'm studying. Uh, the kingdom that is going to come is within you. It's inside you. As you are going to the Bible college, or as you are going to the workplace, or as you are, you know, living in that apartment complex in that neighborhood, the kingdom of God is there. Because where you are is where the kingdom is. Because the kingdom of God is within you. It's inside you. So wherever you are, wherever we are, whatever situation that we enter in, the king and his kingdom already steps in because the kingdom of God is within us. We've, we've already looked at all of these things. I'm just uh, reiterating it, you know. So there's a potential for God's kingdom to be released in and through any and every situation. There's a potential for God's kingdom to be released into that place because you and I have walked in and the kingdom is within us. So we are basically carrying God's kingdom. And even as we are carrying God's kingdom, we are you know, able to manifest his kingdom. And even as we're carrying his kingdom or the kingdom of God is within us, we're carrying his authority and his power into that situation, into that circumstances, into that uh, place, wherever we are going. So we need to be conscious that the kingdom of God is within us now. There's one thing that you and I need to understand about this kingdom of God, that there is a dichotomy or there is a paradox uh, or this, there are two opposites. On one hand, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, he said that unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. So there is this whole dimension of expressing God's kingdom uh, which requires childlikeness from us, childlike faith, childlike abandoning ourselves uh, to the Father's trust and totally depending and surrendering ourselves totally to Him. 
But in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus also said something else. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, and uh, somebody else can read Luke chapter 16, verse 16. So can somebody read that, please? Matthew 11, 12, and Luke 16, 16. Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. Amen. Thank you. Can uh, someone else read uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, please? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Online students, what's wrong? None of you are reading. What happened to Rin and to uh, Nina Santosh and Nikhil and uh, Sri Radha? Um, what's happening there? Can you please uh, quickly read the uh, scripture passages? You can just pass on the mic quickly. I'm sure you're close to each other. And please be ready to read uh, so that we don't have any waste of time. Okay. So there are certain areas of our life and relationship uh, with God where, you know, where we just need to, um, you know, expect us to be childlike. Unless we are childlike, you know, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus says. But on the other hand, there are things in life where God expects us to be militant in the spirit. You know, he expects us to be aggressive in the spirit, which is unless we become violent in the spirit or we become aggressive or militant like in the spirit, we cannot enter into that uh, kingdom. Because Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So this is something you and I must understand and begin to live by. So we have to press in into the things of the kingdom. You know, it says here we need to press into the things of the kingdom. So you can ask the question, why, you know, do I have to press in as if it is God holding it back from me, you know, it, and I need to just pull it from him or snatch it from him. It's not that. It's not God holding it back from me. Uh, or it's not God holding it back from you. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Look at what uh, Jesus says in Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Can one of you read that, please? Luke 12, 32. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes, what is your father's good pleasure to give you? It is his the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Okay, so the father wants you to have the kingdom. He wants you to have the righteousness, peace, and joy, which is a characteristic of his kingdom or describes his uh, kingdom and he wants you to have what is in his uh, kingdom so it's not that god is saying that you have to you know try to wriggle it out of his hands uh, no that's not what he's trying to say but you know uh, what we need to look at is that there are two great enemies that you and i face one of course we know our enemy is uh, you know, we wrestle against principalities and powers. There are demonic forces that are ready to hold back what God has intended and designed for your life and for my life. And so when they oppose, you know, um, uh, we need to fight through to take what God has is has given for us what god says is ours what god says is yours what god has purpose and plan for you you know we need to be forceful militant like aggressive in our spirit 
to take what God has already released or what God has given to us because the enemy, you know, is trying to oppose or to stop or to fight uh, from us receiving what God has already released it uh, or given um, uh, to us, you know. So God has intended and designed this for your life. So when the enemy opposes, we have to fight through to take what God says is ours. But there's also another enemy and that enemy is closer to home. It's just right beneath our skin and it's called our flesh. Okay. So sometimes in order to experience the kingdom of God, in order to receive what is in the kingdom of God, in order to uh, uh, receive and inherit it, to inherit what God said is our inheritance or what we can inherit, you know, we've got to fight the enemy and this enemy is underneath your skin and my skin and it's called the flesh, okay? Because left uh, to itself, our flesh will be so happy, you know, to take us to hell. But, uh, you know, you and, uh, but uh, we need to fight this enemy. Uh, we need to fight our flesh. You know, uh, we need to crucify this flesh. We need to crucify the ungodly desires of uh, our flesh in order to press into, you know, all that God has, uh, has uh, envisioned for us and kept in store for us in order to press into that kingdom and take what God says is mine. Okay, so there are these two enemies. One is a demonic forces, one is Satan that op oppresses, who, who opposes, and also it's the flesh. And we need to fight these two enemies. So we need to be um, aggressive in our spirit man. We need to be militant like in our um, spirit man. And we need to take hold of what God has already released for us. So there are things that God has already given to us. He's released for us. You know, but we don't receive it. It's because of these two enemies that are stopping us from receiving it. And we need to be militant like and aggressive in our spirit man to take what God has already given to us. So there are areas in our life, you know, where God says, I want you to, you know, uh, to be forceful, to press in, to have what I have designed for you to have. And, uh, you know, uh, we must be willing to say, God, you know, I'm ready to be forceful in the spirit. I'm ready to press in. I'm ready to fast. I'm ready to, you know, pray that prayers. I'm ready to, uh, you know, um, uh, pray through till breakthrough. You know, I'm willing, Lord, uh, to stand as I ought to stand and, you know, stand in faith, stand putting on my uh, the armor of God. And I'm willing to do what it takes, uh, whether it takes to, you know, declare your word, you speak your promises, uh, decree your words, speak over my situations, uh, pray fast, you know, press in. Uh, do what it takes uh, to uh, to press in to see that the kingdom blessings that you have already released over my life and into my life or over my family, over my work, my job, my vocation, the course that I'm studying um, or my family, whatever, you know, that blessing comes into my life to inherit God, what you have said that I can inherit and I'm going to do that and I'm going to be forceful, I'm going to be aggressive and I, I'm going to do what it takes to, um, to, to receive all that you have already released for me, that you have already um, kept in store for me and I'm going to press in. So, you know, we know that uh, any battle that uh, you and I face if we refuse to fight that battle we've already lost that battle by default okay any battle you and i refuse to fight we've already lost it so by default so many of us you know we see uh, battles in our lives and we just give up and you know throw our hands up in the air and say you know maybe i'm not going to experience the kingdom of god in this area of my life or maybe i'm not going to see the blessing of god come through in this area of my life maybe you know this is my 
this is what God has allotted for me. This is uh, this is what uh, is supposed to happen in my life, you know. Or you can say that I cannot experience the kingdom of God in this area of my life. And we can just throw up our hands without a fight. And if we do that, we've already lost the battle by default in that specific area. And yes, we cannot inherit or receive the blessing that God has already released for us or wants us to uh, inherit. But some. Sometimes, you know, we have to fight to see his kingdom expressed uh, in our life. Maybe it's in, uh, you know, in your marriage, maybe it's your children, maybe it's your profession, maybe it's a job, a career. Um, and, you know, uh, whatever it is, you're saying, God, I know that, you know, you want my marriage to be that covenant that we had made with you know, with uh, me and my spouse and with you and, you know, you want marriage to be, uh, you know, all this, God, you've envisioned this for me and I'm just praying into that. I'm just pressing into that. I'm just seeking after that. Uh, and, you know, uh, you are taking by force what God has already released and given to you in that covenant of marriage. Or you say, you know, God, uh, I, I want my marriage and my home to be a place where there is righteousness, peace and joy, because that is characteristic of your kingdom. And I'm just going to do what it takes to press in, to see, uh, to, uh, till I see a breakthrough, till I see this happening in my marriage, in my home, or, you know, um, you can say, God, I know that you've called me to be successful in my workplace, in my career, so that I can bear a good testimony, and that is being withheld from me, you know, or uh, God, I know that you want my children to walk with you, and I'm not seeing that, but I'm going to do what it takes to press in God, uh, to see and to inherit, to receive the blessing that you have already portioned uh, for me. So the question is, you know, uh, will you and I fight, or will you and I just walk away without a fight? Now, if you walk away without a fight, by default, you've lost the battle. And it's not that God has withheld a good home. It's not that God has destined your children to go to hell. It's not that God is not wanting you to be, uh, you know, prosperous um, in your workplace or your marriage to be a blessing and a joy for you. But, you know, it's, 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 it's not that, you know, but it's... Uh, uh, it's none of that, and uh, but there are things in the kingdom that you and I have to fight for, because Jesus says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are the ones who will take it by force. Okay, so we need to be forceful and need to take what is ours and not stop till we have taken what God has, you know, envisioned or has portioned. Uh, for us. Some of us can say, hey, the battle has been so long, you know, I'm ready to give up. Uh, I mean, how long should I be standing and fighting and declaring and speaking and praying and fasting? But look at what Paul says. Paul has an answer for us in Ephesians chapter 6. He says, brethren, you know, having put on the full armor of God, stand. Okay. So how long should I stand? It doesn't say how long, but we keep standing, okay? So there are battles that you have to keep standing, uh, and sometimes it's long battles that we need to fight. So just keep standing, because as you continue to engage the enemy, whether it is the, the principalities and powers and forces of darkness and Satan, or whether it's your flesh, as you continue to stand and fight and... Um, do what it takes, uh, you know, to fight your battle, you know, you will ultimately win because the battle always belongs to the Lord. Amen. Okay. So, uh, might be a long battle, but we just have to continue standing and fighting. So there's a realm of God's kingdom where God requires you and me to be childlike, but there's also a realm in God's kingdom that God requires us to be warrior-like, uh, to be warrior-like in the spirit. He requires you and me to keep fighting, and he requires you and me to have done all to stand and to keep standing and to keep fighting. 
okay so there is a kingdom mandate on our life and if you want to see the kingdom of god in the areas of your life and my life you know we have to press in to the kingdom uh, and you know um, and even as we pursue or press into the kingdom there are a few things uh, that are mentioned here that will help us to really fulfill uh, this mandate okay so the first thing is you know uh, uh, we must just bring everything uh, in subjection everything in our life in subjection to the king okay so even as um, god wants us to fulfill his mandate you know um, there are some things that will really help us to fulfill the mandate that he has over our life the first thing is that we need to bring every area in our life to the submission to the king where you're saying god everything in my life is about you it's about your kingdom so god's kingdom has to become that pearl of great price in our lives it has to become that treasure in that field where we're willing to leave everything just go by that field to get that treasure and you know it should be like that nothing less so the king and his kingdom uh, should consume us where we are saying god I'm ready to give up everything else just to pursue your kingdom. Or we're saying, Lord, for me, your kingdom is that treasure in that field. God, in your, your, your kingdom is uh, uh, the treasure where I will just leave everything and I will just go after your uh, kingdom. So everything in our lives must now be focused or centered around the kingdom of God. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You know, we are worried about our job, we're worried about our future, we're worried about our children, family, marriage, you know, health, whatever. But if you could just say, Lord, everything in my life is going to be about that kingdom. Lord, I'm consumed with this kingdom. It's that pearl of great price in my life. Everything is going to be about your kingdom or everything in my life is going to be upon that uh, kingdom. You know, and the reason, God, I live is because I want to see your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. The reason I'm working, uh, the reason... Uh, I'm studying the reason I'm doing what I'm doing or the reason why I'm in ministry or the reason why I'm parenting or the reason why I'm a spouse or a reason why I am living in the specific area or the reason why I'm studying God. Everything is because I want to see your kingdom come and everything in my world, uh, God, would just be centered and focused around that will be centered and focused around seeing your kingdom come and your will be done so that's when we start fulfilling our kingdom mandate when we submit and surrender every area of our life and the kingdom becomes top most importance and priority like that pearl of great price and that field with the hidden uh, treasure now you know the question is can we do that in our lives can we say god everything in my life from this day forward is going to be about just your kingdom seeing your kingdom come your will be uh, done and you know just saying god i want everything to have uh, that i'm doing in my life to have meaning for that uh, kingdom and everything that i'm doing in my life or i'm being or the way i'm living is for the extension of that kingdom or for the sake of the kingdom of um, God okay even if you're studying you know say God I want to position myself in such a place where I can you know do something for your kingdom or in your job you can say God in my job I want to make a difference for the kingdom and everything about that kingdom so everything is going to be about the kingdom or the place where I'm living you place me in this uh, neighborhood God everything that you know I'm uh, I'm doing or we're living here everything is to make a difference for your kingdom it's about your kingdom so you're saying God I bring my entire life uh, in subjection to the king and to his uh, kingdom okay so as you and I fulfill the kingdom mandate we must begin to you know um, 
not only just submit and surrender, but also unleash kingdom influence. You know, we, uh, again, coming back to the point that, you know, the kingdom of God is within us, and the kingdom of God that is within us is like a mustard seed, uh, which when is sown, it grows into a, a, a plant, you know. Um, and Jesus said the kingdom is like this, it's like a little leaven, you know, which when put into a lump, it's going to affect the entire lump. And uh, we know that the kingdom of God is within us. We are an expression of that kingdom. You and I are an expression of that kingdom. We are that seed. Uh, you and I are that leaven. Uh, you know, that God has placed uh, in our neighborhood, in the apartment complex, uh, whichever city, town, you know, uh, the place of work that we are in, wherever God has placed us, you know, he wants his influence to come in and through us. He wants to unleash his kingdom influence, his kingdom power, his kingdom authority in and uh, through us. So part of uh, the kingdom mandate is when we say, God, help me to be an influence uh, in my world, in the world that you have placed me, in my small environment, in the place that you have uh, uh, portioned for me, God, help me to be an influence. So how can we be that little mustard seed uh, 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 the place where you're studying, the Bible college, or in your office, or in your neighborhood, or how can you be that little leaven um, that is in that uh, that lump, or how can you be salt and light? You know, we already studied about it, uh, the way that we think, kingdom thinking, you know, by the way we do things, um, you know, the way that we live, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture, we begin to bring about kingdom influence into our spheres or the, uh, the, the, the environment or the world, that little world that, you know, we are in. So, uh, you know, just think about the difference that we can make to the rest of people around us, you know, if we just live like kingdom citizens, if we think like kingdom citizens, if we have, you know, follow the kingdom culture and the kingdom lifestyle, you know, the influence, the powerful influence that we can be uh, to people around us and how we can impact their um, lives, okay? Um, so whatever you are doing, thinking, living, you know, you might not be conscious of it, but you are bringing his kingdom influence into that sphere or the place that God has uh, placed you. You know, when you move around with your friends, you're being that little leaven, that lump that's making a difference into their lives. Just by the way you think, just by the way that you live, you're bringing about kingdom influence into their uh, lives. And, you know, remember that the kingdom of God is inside us, as we've already said. It's an overpowering kingdom. It's a pervasive kingdom. Uh, if anything is going to win, it is his kingdom that is operating in and through your life and my life, okay? But he needs to release that influence in and through each one of us because we are the salt, we are the light. You are the salt, you are the light. So, you know, can we begin to just pray and say, God, you know, even as I live in this neighborhood, as, as if I go shopping or, you know, walking uh, my daily uh, walks, morning walks, evening walks, if I go to work, God, I want to bring your influence of your kingdom uh, wherever I go, the place that I uh, uh, set my foot on. I want to bring about your kingdom influence. I want to uh, think kingdom thinking. I want to live kingdom lifestyle and I want to live kingdom culture so that I can become an uh, influence. So when you begin to pray that, you know, um, you will see, you know, uh, his kingdom come, his will be done in that um, place. Okay. So even as you begin to pray that kingdom come, uh, you know, you just uh, see your boss and you say, God, I pray your kingdom come uh, in this place, in and through my boss, um, let your kingdom come uh, in his heart, his life. Or if you look at your colleagues, you just say a simple prayer and say, uh, God, you know, let their, your kingdom come through these friends that I'm working with. Um, 
And when you do that, you're basically being a kingdom influence in that uh, place. And even as you begin to do that, you know, we need to proceed to the next step, which is, um, you know, uh, uh, ad bringing an advancement of the kingdom invasion, which is in you. Now you're beginning to say, God, give me some strategies, give me some ways, give me some methods to bring about the kingdom of God into my sphere of influence and uh, the invasion of God's kingdom in the hearts and lives of this people. So the first thing to do to fulfill the kingdom mandate is to be submissive and totally surrender every area of our lives to king and his kingdom. The second thing is, you know, the kingdom of God is a pervasive uh, kingdom. It can um, influence. So we need to be an uh, influencer wherever God has placed us. And the next thing is, you know, we need to bring about kingdom advancement. Um, and how do we bring about kingdom advancement is you know, just ask God for strateg strategies to give us ways, methods uh, to bring about his um, uh, kingdom into the hearts and lives of uh, people. So our objective, you know, is, uh, you know, that we are not just being a, a kingdom influence wherever we are. So people see us and know, hey, we are believers, you know, there's something powerful in us, but, you know, it should become something that they are uh, living, that they are wanting for themselves, that they are also living kingdom lifestyle, kingdom culture, and uh, thinking kingdom uh, thoughts. So our objective is to see God's kingdom come into the hearts and lives of people, not just for us to be, uh, you know, an influencer, not just for us to, you know, um, uh, uh, unleash kingdom influence in the places that God has put us in, but also that people that we encounter with or we live along with, you know, they must experience the king and his uh, kingdom. Okay, so we need to show them what the kingdom of God is uh, like. OK, so you can say, God, you know, show me ways in which I can bring about invasion of your kingdom among these people that I uh, live. And God might give you some simple ideas. Maybe at your workplace, you can start a Bible study during, you know, lunchtime. Or you can just pray with people who are going through difficult uh, situations, uh, difficult circumstances. You can see you can see what they're going through. You can just pray, you know. Or maybe um, you know, one day in a week, you can all get off at, from work early, go to the cafeteria, or go to a, a coffee day close by, and just you know have a Bible study or a prayer meeting, invite people. Uh, in some pl workplaces, there are uh, chapels, so you can also you know, uh, uh, begin prayer there. I know many uh, believers in the workplace have started these things, you know, um, slowly start all of these things which can uh, build uh, or uh, bring about kingdom influence, kingdom invasion, and the kingdom of God in the lives and the hearts of people that um, that we encounter on an everyday basis. Uh, I'd like to just share uh, a testimony that was very, I was very inspired uh, 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 about, you know, Tommy Tenney. I don't know if you've heard about Tommy Tenney. Uh, he was a pastor for over 10 years, and then he went on to be an itinerary uh, 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 minister, just traveling around as a revival preacher and uh, emphasizing revival and unity in the body of Christ. And even as he that, uh, did that, you know, sorry, even as he did that as an uh, itinerant uh, minister, you know, God gave him such supernatural favor that he would preach among the Presbyterians, the Baptists, the Charismatics, even the Catholics. And, you know, um, even as he preached to this group of people, God gave him such favor. And finally, one day God spoke to him and said, uh, you know, Tommy, I want you to do much more than what you are doing. Um, and Tommy Tenney was shocked because he said, he told God, God, look at my schedule. The whole year is packed with, you know, preaching assignments the whole year. Uh, you know, I can't take on any more preaching uh, engagements because my whole year is already packed. Uh, he's already written so many wonderful books that uh, are a blessing to the body of Christ. 
and he's and he tells God, God, what are you saying? What more do you want me to uh, do? And God says, look at your schedule. And he says that, you know, more than 90% of your time is spent in ministering to believers. You know, uh, time is uh, spent uh, ministering to believers who are already Christians who already know about Jesus Christ. So he says, you know, why don't you look outside the church? God tells him, look outside the church, do something for people outside the church. And then he begins to pray about it and God moves him. And uh, since he's a writer, you know, God tells him to use his writing skills and um, minister to the uh, to people outside the church. So he spends time studying the book of Esther and uh, he comes out with uh, a book called Hadassah, One Night with the King. So he writes this novel, it's a Christian novel and he releases it. And uh, soon he gets, after it's released, he gets a call from Hollywood saying that, you know, the, one of the producers saying that he read his book and they want to make a movie and they want him to come. So imagine, you know, he's going to Hollywood. Here is this revival preacher going to Hollywood. And uh, here is Tommy Tenney sitting in front of these movie superstars and teaching them from the book of Esther and telling them what Esther uh, is all about. So you know, what a strategy, you know, um, uh, they would never call a preacher, they would not call a revival preacher uh, to come to them otherwise. And so we just see that, you know, God just opened a door for him to do something in uh, the world outside, outside the Christian uh, circle. So likewise, God can give us something which will just open a door so that people will want to listen to what you have to say about God and it will lead them to um, uh, believe. Okay, So it can be simple things, but all you need to do is just ask God, uh, say, God, show me how in my world, how in my sphere of influence, what do you want me to do? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, so that a door can be opened uh, for uh, the advancement of your kingdom in the hearts and lives of people. And sure, God will give you some ideas. It might be simple ideas, but how, that's how you and I can start uh, some practical ways where we can see his kingdom come and his will be uh, done. Okay. So even as you're bringing um, everything in your life in subjection to the king and to his kingdom, even as you're being a kingdom influence in your uh, sphere, in your circle, and as you are beginning to work out these strategies that God is putting in your heart, in your mind, in seeing the advancement of the kingdom of God, also remember that this kingdom comes with power. Okay, It's a kingdom of uh, power. Like Paul says that, you know, uh, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power so that you might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Okay, so here we see that Paul, even though, uh, you know, he was well trained and a learned man, but he depended on not on human wisdom, not on all the education that he had received, but on God's um, power. Okay, so, so he's saying that, you know, um, all that I've studied, all the knowledge that I've received is nothing uh, when I come to you, but it's God's power that is operating in your, in my life, in and through my life. And that is what is, uh, you know, um, uh, ministering to people and bringing people out of darkness into his marvelous um, light. So even as the kingdom of God is within us, we know that God has given us kingdom authority and his kingdom comes with power. Okay, even when Jesus sent out his disciples, you know, uh, he sent them out two by two in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and verse 9. Can somebody read that, please? Uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 9. Can somebody read that? Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 9. After these Luke things, the Lord 10. appointed... Uh, one 70 nine. others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was bought to go about to go and heal the sick there and say to them the kingdom of god has come near to you 
Amen. So we see that, you know, Jesus gives them the authority and the power to heal the sick. And when they do that, to say that the kingdom of God has come and the kingdom of God is near uh, you. So even as the king that God has given us the authority and the power and the kingdom of God is in us, we need to expect the manifestation of the kingdom of God, or we need to expect the power of God to be unleashed or to be released in and through our um, lives. Okay, just like to give an example, um, just one of the churches, a very uh, a church that flows uh, in the supernatural. You know, there's many signs, miracles, and wonders happening in this church um, um, in the U.S. Um, you know, and there was a U.S. veteran, uh, uh, an elderly veteran of the U.S. Army. You know, he was down with cancer in his final stages of cancer. The doctor had given up and he's almost going to die. And uh, they lived in the neighboring town where this church was. So his son said, uh, Dad, you know, I've heard many people saying that, you know, they've gone to this church, the healing rooms in this church, and they have been healed and restored, even cancer. So why don't you try now, this man was not somebody who believed in God. And so he said, okay, since my son uh, is his last wish, there's no harm in me going over there. So, you know, he agrees, he goes, and he goes to healing rooms. And, um, you know, these people who are there to minister to him and pray to him. So he says, uh, you can pray for me, but nobody should touch me. Okay, he was very clear about that. And, uh, you know, uh, he says, I, I'm I'm my last stage of cancer and anyway, I'm going to die. But I'm just here for my son. I don't believe in prayer. I don't believe in God. But since my son told me, I just came. I don't want to disappoint him. So he says, if you pray for me, uh, you know, you can, but nobody should touch me. So they all gathered around him, started praying, but he opened his eyes and, you know, uh, he didn't want anyone to touch him. And then after a few minutes, he just felt immense peace that he closed his eyes and they were all praying. And at that moment, a 12 year old boy who had not uh, been instructed, you know, uh, or not heard this instruction not to lay hands, he just comes, he breaks into that uh, crowd, that group, and, you know, he just comes and puts his hand on this, uh, this man. And this man just boom falls on the ground. You know, he's knocked out for the next 45 minutes. And when he wakes up, he looks up and he first question he asks is who touched me, you know, and they all point out to this 12 year old boy. Now, obviously, he can't do anything to that kid because, you know, he didn't know anything. Um, but this man did go home and he when he went home, he felt a lot more better. And when he went to the hospital, the doctors checked him and there was no trace of cancer in his body. It was completely gone. Now, the doctors kept calling him again and again. Fourteen doctors in that hospital were shocked. How can this happen? They kept calling him again and again, kept asking him a lot of questions, doing a lot of investigations. He got so fed up that he, you know, he wrote a own brochure. Uh, about details about what happened to him, uh, you know, and he said, if uh, you want any more details about how I was healed, how the cancer just left my body, you know, this is the address of this church, you can go to this place, this is the healing rooms, and you can ask these people. Um, so any more investigations you want, you can contact this church. So he gave the church's name and uh, the address. Now, the What's the point? The point here is, you know, a 12 year old just laid hands and God did something. Uh, why? Because, you know, it's not your size, it's not your age, it's just that the kingdom of God is within um, you. And his kingdom comes with power to fulfill the kingdom mandate that it's uh, that is on our life. So let's not think, you know, uh, what we are, how we are going to establish his kingdom. You know, uh, it's not by our efforts. It's going to be by the power of God. You know, um, it's not about our identity. It's not about who we are. It's not about uh, our reputation. It's not about the church we are uh, from. It's not about whether you are liked or whether you are accepted by people, whether people adore you or not. It's not about anything, but it's about his kingdom. Okay, to end it all, what did Jesus say? You know, when you pray, he said, remember to say this, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Okay, so it's all about 
Jesus because it is his kingdom. He is the Lord of the kingdom. He, it's not about me. It's not about my reputation. It's not about my church. It's not about all people's church. It's not about whether you are liked or whether you are not liked or accepted by people or adored or not adored. It's all about his kingdom. And his kingdom mandate is on you and it's on me. And we need to pray thy kingdom come and do it with the perspective that, you know, both the power and the glory belongs to him. OK, so let's stop being uh, let's stop uh, being worried about ourselves, but let's just pursue his kingdom and what matters in the end that it is his kingdom that it is it is his power and all the glory and honor will go to him because all the glory and honor belongs to him and him alone but we just pursue the kingdom mandate that is on our lives and even as we do that uh, let's just um, totally submit and surrender to the king in everything that we do every area let's advance the kingdom uh, uh, and let's walk in kingdom authority, power, and dominion. And finally, he will receive all the glory and honor. Okay. So that is the last lesson. Uh, any questions anyone has? Any questions? OK, so even as we have uh, come to the end of this publication, we'll start the the kingdom, uh, kingdom builders next week but all that we learned i hope uh, has blessed you and please put it into uh, practice okay thank you everyone for uh, joining class today have a blessed week and live as kingdom citizens um, you know invading your sphere with kingdom influence and with kingdom power and he will receive all the glory and honor god bless you thank you everyone